good day. This video will guide us on how to install the Oracle VM VirtualBox and the ERP Next uh, application. From the OneDrive link posted in our OpenLMS, kindly download the ERP Next production.ova or Open Virtual Appliance. This is our ERP system. And then please download as well the VirtualBox 6.1.32 version running on Windows if you are using an, a Windows operating system. So once these two files are downloaded, okay, we can now proceed with the installation. So we'll start first with the VirtualBox by double clicking it. And uh, a prompt is telling us or asking us if you want to allow this application to make changes. So of course, we'll just press yes to allow installation. And then the Oracle VM VirtualBox setup box appears. So again, we click the next button and accept all the defaults, okay? Clicking again the next one. Um, the options are by default check. We'll also accept those. And then on this box, it's telling us that the, the VM virtual box networking feature will reset the network connection and temporarily disconnect us from the network. So we will say yes and proceed with the installation. Okay, so to start the installation, press the install button. Okay, so we can see that it's already copying the files. So let's just wait until this is completed. All right, so we, when we're done, we just click the finish button. Okay, so once done with the installation, Virtu Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager opens and you'll see that, uh, and you'll see this window or view on your screen. So now we need to include the ERP next.ova file into this VM by clicking the file button and select the import appliance. Okay. So on the appliance to import a window, we will locate and browse to where our ERP next software is. So it's in the desk that downloads and this is the ERP next dash production file. So we just open it and then press the next button. So this gives us a summary of the resources needed by the appliance or the ERP next. Um, it, uh, it would have a CPU of two, a RAM and a network adapter and many other requirements plus the information about ERP Next are also indicated there. So let's click the import button. Okay. And you'll see that the appliance is now being Im imported. So this step would take a while. So we'll wait until it's 100% imported. Okay, once completed, we'll see that the ERP Next is already inside our Oracle Virtual Machine VirtualBox Manager, okay? So to load this uh, application, um, ensuring it's selected, and we just need to press the Start button with the green arrow. So pressing that one, This opens this command prompt. Okay, so VirtualBox 6.1. Okay, and you see we have two alerts at the top, which just giving us information about the auto capture keyboard uh, configuration and the mouse pointer integration. So We'll just close this alerts 
and see that the ERP Next production file or application is already running and it's running uh, in a different operating system, which is a Linux Ubuntu. Okay, so it says here, to access ERP Next, we must go to local host colon 8080 on our host system. And we'll be using the username administrator with a capital A, and the password is just admin, okay. Uh, the succeeding text you see on the prompt uh, is telling us that if in case there is an update on ERP Next VM, so we can update it by logging in as uh, the username FRAP with the same password. And we go to the directory FRAP-bench and then issue the bench, bench update command, okay? But as of this moment, since we are just unload, uh, installed our ERP next, so we'll just uh, go straight to the HTTP colon, again, double slash, localhost, colon, 8080, okay? So we go to our browser, okay? So that's our host system. So on our browser, we will just type in localhost, okay? And then colon 8080, okay? And then press enter. All right, so this leads us to the login page of ERP Next. So let us again open our virtual box with our uh, ERP Next already running, right? So we can see that it's already running. Um, if, for example, uh, we're done with uh, working on our ERP Next, we can just close this application at the bottom, this window. We can just close this and we will be asked of what we want to do. So there are three options, save the machine state, send the shutdown signal or power of the machine. So what we will be doing is to power of the machine. So let's press OK. Okay. With our ERP Next powered off, you'll see the status. It's already powered off. And if we refresh the local host, okay, if we refresh, this actually gives us an error and says the site cannot be reached. So, which means every time we access our local host into our browser, we have to have the ERP next running, okay? So again, let's go back and click the start button to have the ERP next running. All right, so it's already starting and now it's running. All right, so again, close the alert. And we now go back to our browser. So in localhost, call on 8080. And we can again see the login page. So let's start setting up our ERP next by typing in uh, the default uh, username and password. So again, looking back into our ERP next production running. The username is administrator and the password is admin. So let's type in administrator, password is admin, right? And then press login. Okay, so uh, if you're using Chrome, uh, it's also giving you a prompt that that password has been used with the data breach because as we know, administrator and password ad admin is very common. So we'll just ignore and close that prompt and answer if you want uh, the password saved or not. Okay, now uh, what we have to first set is the language. So at default value, it's English. Okay, there are other available language, but we'll be selecting the default value and then press the next button. Okay. So we are to choose the country. So I just type in PH. So we'll choose Philippines and automatically the time zone and the currency had been selected. Okay. 
So if you notice, it's a Philippine piso. So that's how uh, it was uh, recorded on the ERP Next application. So why is the currency needed? Because we know that an ERP contains an accounting module. So that's why uh, we have to set the country and the currency. All right, so next, uh, we click the next button again. And uh, you'll be asked of your full name, your email address, and then the password we will be setting. So let's type in our name and then the email address. So I prefer to use my Sanbeda email address. Right. And then for my password, so let me just get, all right. Okay, and then we click again the next button, okay? So next on the window would be the domain. So we will be asked to select a domain for our ERP. And the options are distribution, education, manufacturing, retail, services, agriculture, healthcare, and nonprofit, okay? We can actually select um, manufacturing, but that would be a uh, more complicated ERP because a product uh, would still entail inventory of the raw materials, even the smallest raw materials. So we'll just select okay, the simpler domain, which is the retail. So let us select retail where our company which we will be use, which will be using the this ERP next. Uh, we'll just get uh, products from the supplier and then sell it. Okay, so again, selecting retail, we press the next button, and we should type in our company name. So in this in this uh, window where we are identifying the brand, so you can name your company any with any name you like. So for me, uh, let me just. Name it APSERP PM, our code company incorporated. Okay, so let me just use this as my company name. And then for the abbreviation, sige, I'll accept the suggestion of having it as ACI. Okay, so let me just click the next button. And then for the organization, so what does it do? So it means we need to give a short description of the company. So let me, uh, for my company, I'm signing it as a computer retail store, okay? And then we also need to identify our bank. So for this bank, I will just make a fictitious bank. So Bank Philippines, okay, so ABC Bank Philippines. For the chart of accounts, so of course, I know you know how, what, what chart of account means. We are given two options, okay, the standard and the standard with numbers, okay. So if we choose the default standard and press the view chart of accounts button below, we'll see that these are the charts we have on our chart of accounts. So we have a lot and that's already pre-configured on ERP next. But if we choose standard with numbers and view chart of accounts, you'll see that we have numbered charts. Okay, so we have 1,000 would be for the application of funds, etc. Okay, so actually we can choose any of the two um, for simplicity, we'll just choose the standard one, okay? And then for the financial year, uh, it's uh, what it was already set to the current year and it started from January 1 and ends on December 31, all right? So we'll be accepting these values and we'll press the complete setup, okay? Complete setup, so you'll see it's starting the FRAP and is currently setting up our system. All right, and that's it. We have already set 
our ERP for our company. So you'll see on this uh, home menu, okay, the different modules which we can use. We have the getting started, accounting, selling, buying, stock, assets, projects, CRM, support, human resources, and quality. So these are the modules available for the domain we had selected, the retail. So if we had selected any other domain, uh, you may have fewer or even more uh, modules spot depending on what the domain we have chosen. So scrolling down, we have the domain as retail. Okay? And we can also choose whether it's a POS pro profile or POS. So let's get to that as we... Uh, use ERP next for in our next activities. So just to show there are also places okay uh, which also are co is connected to your ERP next. So we have the website, the dashboard, social uh, marketplace and the leaderboard. And then of course there are administration tools, settings, users and permission if in case you want to add users to your ERP, Next, and then customization, integration, and learn, right? So, and that's it. Uh, we're now ready to use our ERP Next in our next meetings, okay?